Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here, Stan O'Connor, host of Bachelor Nation News. And if you weren't with us Tuesday night after the Bachelor finale, we did plenty of different interviews, one of which I'm going to re-air for you guys right now. Dr. Diane Strakowski joined me to discuss her thoughts on Clayton's evolution, what she felt about him, and Susie uh, sort of taking back uh, him after you know we saw the dramatic resolution to their season. So I'm going to play for you guys the reaction moments after we watch the show. Here's my chat once again with Dr. Diane Strakowski. Ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by the one, the only, Dr. Diane Strakowski. Hello, how are you? Good, Dave. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thanks for asking. You're having a nice little red wine there, some Merlot? Uh, no, it's white wine, but I, I use it in my gold glass so you can't tell what I'm drinking. Oh, very nice. Now, you just watched on the West Coast. I love your backdrop. You got the little pink backdrop there. It looks nice. I, I do. This is my uh, this is my studio where I've got my roses and everything. Yes, yes. What did you think? <laughs> Dave, I love the ending, but I think it was going to be um, hard for people, right, to reconcile after sort of what we saw with um clayton and Susie, that she comes back what are people saying about that um a lot of people i think i think reflect the studio audience which is that they're not excited for them but i think it's a win for everybody if if they're happy you know what i mean i don't know what do you what do you think yeah am i still sitting too close to the camera no i think you're good i think the chat's a little behind yeah you're good okay sorry sorry okay so listen i'm all about team love, right? And I liked, I'll I'll be honest with you, I want to talk about something. I was thinking about all my thoughts. What do I want to talk about? The one thing that I think the viewers can learn and we can all learn is about how to do closure right, okay? Mm. Um, Because what really got me was when Rachel said, he's not even crying, (laughs) okay? And I want to give men and women the same feedback because when you break up and we know breakups are messy, right? They're ugly. No one can deny that, but you owe the person the feeling like they mattered, right? And that's the thing that I think is so important in closure and tears that, um, tears that you mattered, that I cared would have gone such a far way. And so when people are breaking up, because it's so hard, right? Like you break up and then you get on social media and you see that they're having a good time and it just makes you feel like what you went through didn't matter at all. As opposed to if you hear that the person's struggling and it's hard, then it felt like it meant something more. So to Gabby's point and Rachel's point, no one wants to be dismissed. Now, how do you think they handled the situation? Because it was very interesting. Uh, The fact that Clayton broke up with them together kind of created an equal playing field, but they reacted differently. We saw Rachel with more anger, and Gabby is so great at being graceful but still making her points. What are your thoughts on how they they both coped? Well, absolutely. And um, I wrote in a post today that I thought, and I don't know what your theory is, Dave, I thought that that Gabby stayed for Rachel. Mm. So when we see the last night's rose ceremony, right, Gabby composes herself first. Now we don't know again the editing and the timing, but Gabby composes herself first. And then we were like, well, why'd she come back? And my theory was that she came back to help her girl who she thought I can handle this. And at any point she felt more confident that she could get up and leave. But I thought that she felt that Rachel was more in it. And I was more worried for Rachel than I was for Gabby. Do you think that's an age thing with Gabby? She's a few years older. Is that something that just comes with experience? I think personally, and I don't know this to be true, but given what Gabby had told us about her family and her own mother, you know, she's not, she doesn't have any, she's estranged from her mother. She has no contact with her. I got the sense that Gabby has done some therapy. That girl, I'm going to bet, has done some work. 
the way that she speaks, the way that she carries herself, I thought she really knows herself. And I felt like it may not be an age thing, but I thought Rachel was just more into Clayton. In fact, I had predicted, and I even, even went on my stories today predicting that Rachel was going to be the person in the end. Because I saw Rachel really putting her entire heart into it. So I thought that Gabby came to protect her girl, and I loved that. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, it's okay. Are you okay? I mean, that sweetness, that's what we are cheersing tonight, is women's friendship. Dave. Yeah, here's cheers, <laughs> cheers, to, cheers. I mean, cheers to women, right? And I love The Bachelorette. I just love it. I love the love stories. I love the conversations. So that's what I'm so excited about. Yes, and and Gabby has empathy and she's a nurse and she is, um, I just thought to me, she was just a joy throughout. I love Rachel too. Rachel was so in it. And I loved that they both at the end had their voice. I loved what both of them said to Clayton. It needed to be said. But my advice about closure is you be careful how you say it. And I've said this once before about apologies. You don't say, I'm sorry if you're sad. I'm sorry if I hurt you. I'm sorry, no ifs, ands, or buts. I'm sorry I hurt you. Yeah. Not if, maybe, no buts. Just say that. And then that to me is the best way you can take accountability and responsibility. And, and then Susie and Clayton will have to work that out. Um, you know, the whole time I've been hoping that they get support, someone to help them unwind all of this. Um, but they're on their own journey and who knows, we'll see what happens in the future. Uh, great, great thoughts. Has your, has your uh, opinion of Clayton changed since we spoke last week? No. <laughs> now, you had a well, now that's no, Dave, that's not true. After remember you and I spoke right after the show and I, in the meantime, got to listen to Caitlin's podcast. I got to listen to Ben and Ashley's podcast. And I really, my heart went out to claim nobody. And this reminded me of Rachel Lindsay because I was at the women tell all on the Peter season. And Dave, Rachel Lindsay got up and talked about the flack that the BIPOC women had gotten the death threats, the horrible comments that they had gotten for Bachelor Nation, and I will never forget that. So my heart went out to claim, to Caitlin's point, he didn't kill anyone for Pete's sake. I mean, my God, it was so virile. So I did soften my message after that. And maybe you change your message a little bit. I love the male-female kind of dynamic, right? Because um, I was reading the comments after too. So but I still think that the work is the growth um, to be able to show up in real time. And, and part of that is just age and experience. We also, I was doing my own video. I don't know what Clayton's relationship history is. He's a young man. There's just a lot of room for growth. Now, yeah. I wanted to get your comment, though. What did you think about all the commentary last night? Uh, the commentary from um, the Bachelor right. alumni? Yeah. I, I think yeah. it's what? complete garbage. I don't know what sort of paycheck was dangled in front of them, but it's like Nick and Claire. Uh, look, here's what they make it tough, right? They, sh they wheel them in there for like a three second sound bite. And I think when I listened to Nick on his podcast, he sounded a little bit more forgiving of Clayton, but it's like, bro, you were there too. And Clayton doesn't have nearly the amount of experience on camera that Nick had. Nick was on The Bachelorette, and I then believe he was on a second Bachelorette, then he was on Bachelor in Paradise, and then he was a lead. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, look, bro, come on. You're not that far removed. It's like when you're it's like you're talking to your dad, and your dad's like, Dad, you just don't get it. It's like, Nick, you're, this was only a few years removed. You know what the haters are like. He admits it when he interview. you know, he admits it with Katie sees, and he's like, oh, there's everyone, everyone gets PTSD. Well, it's like, not everyone copes with it maybe the way you do, or you just have recovered from it, or it's gotten worse in the last couple of years. You know, since the well, pandemic, you know, it just might be worse now. Well, if you really wanted to talk about PTSD, I'm happy to go down that path uh, to talk about what that really is. But I, I do believe that to me, it felt like a lot. 
I mean, I was already bracing myself today, feeling having mixed feelings, feeling a bit anxious, like it's going to be hard enough to go up against one, two or three exes, right? Much less everybody else commenting and myself included, right? I'm commenting on his relationship. I don't know him, but I do see hundreds and thousands of couples. So I'm basing it based upon a broader scope than someone's personal experience. Having said that, the alumni have been where he is, and we do appreciate that they're isolated, that they have no support. I've listened to Caitlin Bristow talk about how out of your element you actually are. But I agree with you. To me, it just felt um, it felt like a lot. Yeah, and you saw Caitlin and- Bristow was so graceful to him in understanding the experience. They've all been publicly shamed in one way or another, and yet... Yeah. And yet, I don't know if, like, hey, look, maybe the producer said, hey, what's, what's your opinion? Uh, we don't need it. We need you to drag him so that he can get his redemption story the next day. I don't know. But it just was yeah. like, I was watching that going, and my and my fiance goes, yeah, but Nick's got a point. And I'm like, yeah, but that's not, it's not that you can have a point, but it's like, it's almost like union bust. It's almost like uh, they're in a union together and they cross the line. You've got the whole bachelor nation against these guys. Stick up for them. Say it's hard. No one knows what it's like to go through that, except for this small group of people. Quite honestly, that's what I'd sort of hoped because that's what I was hearing on the podcast, at least on Caitlin's. So that got kind of dwarfed. And that's why um, in my post today, I really said, you know, I'm a little bit worried for this guy's mental health. I mean, um, back to what Rachel Lindsay said, nobody deserves that kind of vitriol, that that kind of hate. I mean, it, it, it's a lesson and we should learn from from Clayton himself. We just have to learn how to filter. Right. Because the biggest mistake that that Clayton made was he was emotionally aroused. Right. I mean, he himself said, I was upset. And then we know there's a whole other backstory about why he was upset. Um, that had a lot to do with production. Um, but you have to be careful. I said last time with you, Dave, that the beginning of a relationship is just so fragile and crucial and you have to be careful what your words, Gabby just said that at the end, right? Right. He said like, what are you going to do in your season? And Gabby said, I'm going to be careful with my words. And I loved that. And they're, they're both going to learn so much from this. And I also don't know, um, I'm curious to see how this is all going to work out because I'd also seen a post somewhere that it was going to be on a cruise ship. Did you hear this? It's a rumor. Yeah, well, I talked about it on the earlier okay. live stream uh, with Reality Steve uh, and a few others. It's a rumor that uh, Virgin, they've blocked out some time for the yeah. Virgin Cruise Line. We'll have to see. I mean, a cruise line's not a bad place. They have plenty of rooms and cruise lines are huge. They can separate people. Um, you know, the drama's in the, in the dating. I, I personally could care less if they're in Iceland. I mean, what did we learn about Iceland? You know what I mean? What are they, what, it's just an excuse for the producers to, you know, punch their ticket on the passport. Or an Airbnb commercial, right? I mean, yeah. It's like, okay. it's like, what are they doing? I thought, that was a little, I thought that was a little crazy, but listen, I really want the women. Um, and I, I feel like, um, I've seen enough kind of funny posts that like, if the women own this the way they did own their season, they're going to tell their story and they're not going to be played, right? Like, I've, I've been impressed. And here's the thing that I've said about the difference, Dave, between The Bachelorette and The Bachelor. The Bachelorettes are just more used to handling this kind of stuff. Like, day in, day out in their dating lives, they have mm. more experience kind of dealing with the red flags and what's going on. Like, Gabby seems very skilled at this. Yeah. And you're, you're so right that in more cases than not, I've been hit on uh, uh, one or two times in my life, like, like blatantly hit on my fiance. She can't walk to her car without getting hit on. There's a different dynamic between having to have your walls up as a female picker deciding what's being thrown at you versus men. They're uh, they, they got a sweet tooth. They're a kid in the candy shop. What do you mean? I can hook up with any of them. You know what I mean? And he's, and I said, uh, I said to my fiance, I was like, listen, he's a, he's a strong man. He played a little bit of pro football. He spent his whole life in the gym trying to get as strong as possible. I don't think he's been dating too often. I don't think, I think this is a little bit new to him. And I think the bachelor producers knew that and they licked their lips at getting the chance to get someone who wasn't going to be able to set boundaries and communicate in those things. I agree totally. And first I had said that I thought the producers thought he was going to be another Sean Lowe. And then I'm like, no, I'm wrong on that. That I retract. 
I did think that maybe they did want someone more like Hannah Brown when she was, you know, showed so much exuberance and a little bit naive. And yes, and to other people's point, they even thought that Michelle's season was a little bit boring. And now we need to spice it up. And so Clayton was that person and he was eager. And he also didn't have, right? He didn't have the privilege to go back and watch himself and see how he was right. and hear from other leads about what does this journey look like? I mean, usually there's a whole long buildup, right? Like you're waiting months, a year, you know, to be that. And, and probably Clayton, um, he was easier because he didn't have a lot of conditions. He's not like Michael A who says, listen, come film in Ohio. Cause I've got a kid. Yeah, you're right. Now, as a as a um, psychologist, do you think it would be very easy if you met fifty guys to cherry pick which one would be a complete disaster? Like, do you think they knew all along what they were getting? Well, I think on The Bachelor, we're watching for the women, right? Um, but I. I kind of say, said this to you, Dave, the, the problem is the women are torn ter too. And I, I am so cautious about my women because I speak mostly to women about the women who were traumatized the last time about the women who are just sad. Like if dating is this, and now I turn on my reality TV and I get more of this, how do I feel good about it? Mm -hmm. Right? Like I want a good role model. I want a man who can show me who can revive my faith in men, right? Because that's what Susie said about Clayton originally, right? Like I, I need to be renewed in my faith in men. And, and I'll tell you, my husband was kind of that guy. He, I had been beaten down myself, dated a lot, hundreds. I dated hundreds of men before I met my husband. And he was just so refreshing in that he wasn't that. Now, I... I was going to ask you about this, but you had a nice love letter to your husband. I'll show everybody your Instagram right now at back to love doc. Everyone's got to go give Dr. Diane yeah. a follow over here, but you had, uh, you had mentioned that he was able to help you this past week. How's your mental health doing? Oh, you know what? I'm so much better now, Dave. I just kind of double down. I think you, when you get feedback, you can, um, you know, people will write, hey, she's out of touch, whatever, you know, I read that and I'm like, all right, whatever, you don't have to follow me. But you have to remember <laughs> who your ideal follower is. And I also know something as a psychologist called projection. Yeah, right. And people have their own negative experiences with therapy. They do. They went to a therapist, their relationship still failed. Um, their girlfriend told them you need to get therapy. And they're like, who, me? I'm not going to do that. So people are going to project that. Believe me, I get a lot of my colleagues, we all, I have a support group. I actually have a group of other therapists that I can vent to. So I feel really supported by them because we all get this. Yeah. Um, no one is <laughs> absolved from that. But to the point of doubling down, this is what I know. This is my expertise. And I do reach people on your show and I reach people in my audience that don't know anything about attachment styles. And I say myself, listen, I went to seven different therapists in all this process of dating and not a single one told me, Diane, you too have an anxious attachment style. And if I had known that Dave and did my work earlier, it would have saved me. So my platform comes from that, comes from my own passion about helping people understand themselves and your attachment style is not a negative label. It's not um, something you should be ashamed of. It's really something to work on. So people don't even know what they're reacting to. Yeah. You want to know, you want to know what your triggers are. You want to know where the bear traps are so you can avoid yeah. them. You I mean, for me personally, I feel like I want to know how to react better and then I also want to know how to avoid a situation altogether through better communication, which is kind of where I'm at. You know, I've gotten better at reacting to certain things or not, but now I'm like, all right, I just don't want to cause this at all. I need to do a better job of saying how I feel versus kicking the can down the road because I want to be a people pleaser and I don't want to ruin the moment or whatever. I'm so guilty of always kind of like being laissez-faire with issues I need to work on. 
and then uh, and then it and it becomes a bigger problem in the future. And it's my own root thing is I just want everyone to be happy, but sometimes that causes me to make a problem worse. And that's kind of why I see Clayton, who I think yes. in some ways was yeah. like, you know, he wanted to show everyone his love, and maybe it's because he wanted some love in return, but it really led to like it making it so much worse. I think that's just an ex excellent way to summarize it because you come and he meant it. He came with good intentions, but it needed the finesse, the polish. I also think people, again, to your point about being on TV, that takes a certain amount of skill. It takes experience to do that. And let's face it, we talked about this last time. We all have horrible fights in our life, but thank God they're not being televised, right? Yes. Yeah. So I think this is a celebration for this couple. They're on their journey to work through that. I really think that the healing happens when the cameras are off and you can have the conversation that you really need to have. For me, I always just want to see more time, right? More time put into that relationship, how the family incorporates all of that. In my mind, I'm thinking, how does Susie's family integrate with Clayton's family. We didn't see Susie's family at the finale. Yeah, that might have been the to save to save the surprise. I'm yeah, I'm not I'm not really oh, sure. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. Now, did you at any point think Clayton was going to get back with somebody else as you watched that reveal? Well, I originally thought that it was going to be Rachel because she was so all in. I thought she would take him back. Okay. So. I thought there was going to be a breakup um, and I had heard rumors that it was Susie, but I thought, oh gosh, I don't know about that. So I just kind of went rogue and said, okay, I think it's going to be Rachel because I've been watching that connection the whole time. And remember the producers were playing that up. Yeah, they um, sure were. I, I personally thought that it was a stronger connection between Rachel and I don't read the reality, Steve. I don't want to know the spoilers. So I was just basing it off of body language and what I saw and I thought that was the stronger connection. But I think when it came to Susie, what I was processing earlier was that the dates that he took her on were more the bachelorette type, right? But the yachts and the gifts, and it was like, um, so there's a great book. Uh, do you know the John Gray, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus? Yeah. So I loved this John Gray quote, and he said, when a man gives you some, let's say you go, you're on a date with a man and you're like, "Ugh, this wine is awful. It's horrible. The man feels like he's poured, he's made you that wine himself. Like he takes it personally, like women be careful of that. But when you say like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. It's like, I made that for you myself. Yeah. And so when Clayton's like making Susie happy, I got the sense that that just made him so happy, right? Like he was like, I'm bringing her this, I'm bringing her this happiness. And he liked the way that made him feel. So I do understand that connection in the end. Um, Susie appears to be an elegant woman who did have her boundaries. And then she really thought about it. And I'm really glad she took the time to do that, that she seemed of both of them the calmer person to kind of process that. And I felt like I really liked that about her. Yeah. I, I completely agree with you when it comes to, uh, you know, we, we, people talk about the, the fragile male ego and I go, damn right. It's fragile. All we're trying to do is impress the one that we love. I, I look at my fiance and sometimes she'll be like, Oh, I don't, you know, I'll, I'll call her. How's that sandwich I made for you? I want feedback. I want to know that I can provide. I want her to know that I've got value and we don't always know those things. We can't always vocalize it, but like you want to feel like you're, um, you're, you're adding something. And I feel like it's like what, you know, you can show it with the affirmations of course, but you know, like, just like you said, um, it's hard. It's hard to be criticized because it's like, what do you mean? You're, what do you mean? I'm not good at uh, listening. I'm trying my best. I'm, you know, it's like you're immediately going to attack mode because it's like, I'm doing the best. And so many people don't know how to communicate what that is or take so or, or react so much to criticism that it, 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 you, it's like when you can get the relationship to a place where you trust each other enough to, sh to open up, you can then like find out what makes the other person happy and they can find out how to rub your belly. And it really, it's really something that a lot of relationships I feel like don't get off the ground because they never right. explore what makes them feel good. 
And Dave, I'm going to give you one last point and then I know you got to run too. But um, I gave an example of my husband and I one time, I was going through a really stressful time, not this time, <laughs> a different time. And I said, honey, I need more. Right. And he was like, but I'm doing, it's not like I'm out with the guys and doing all this other stuff. And I said, ho, 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 ho. I'm not saying you're not doing enough. I'm saying I'm drowning. And so women, be careful with your words. And in relationships, another tip is something called the slow start. Okay. So when I'm having a conversation with you, I want to help you know what I need to. So if I call my best friend and I say, hey, Jackie, do you got a minute? I need to vent. Then she knows I'm just venting versus, hey, I need your advice or your opinion. And if we start conversations by saying what we need, I need more from you. I need more support. I need more understanding. Then we're off to a better start in our relationships to just communicate our own needs. And that's what I loved about tonight. Like the women had time to process that and think clearly through what they needed, what they didn't get. And they stated that. And that is empowering. Yeah. And, and that's what I think is so beautiful that a lot of people don't get that, right? Like if some guy breaks up with you, you also don't get the pleasure of being on national TV and telling him what you think. I think it's empowering to be able to get that kind of closure. I don't, I love what Rachel said. I don't have tears for you because I'm pining over you. I felt like I didn't get the chance to say this and I'm saying it now. That's what I loved. Yeah. It's like a breakup redo. They get, they get to, yeah. Every breakup you're like, I wish I said this and you're, she would, during her breakup, we all watched her in Iceland. She was, she was still in the process of maybe denial. I don't know what she was in. And now she's able to process the anger she felt from being put in a situation like that. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's a, I think it's a decent format that they have as long as we, as an audience realize we're kind of ganging up on them and we just like, like we need to watch it more like in a fishbowl and this whole parasocial, like the fact that we can react with them. Every contestant should be able to hit a button where they close off their DMs for the year. They really should. And then all their problems would go away. All their problems would go away if they turn off their DMs. Well, so I love Clubhouse where it says, you know, silently leaving, I think, or something, right? Is that? Yeah. What is it? It's silently. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm leaving the conversation, right? I, I like that too. I do agree. And I think the advice even Caitlin gave to... Uh, to Clay and turn off the DMs. Don't read it. Don't don't listen to it. But we all care. We don't want to be hurt. And mm. I myself, I even admitted and I put a comment on your post. I was a little fresh off that too. And I had strong feelings. And sometimes we get more information. We listen to things. We slow down. We process. Um, you know, it's going to take everybody a little bit to process this ending too. And that's why I say we all just need more time, more breath. I do think I love that we are left with knowing who the bachelorettes are. That feels the most satisfying to me. Yeah. Um, right. So that I don't have to wait for another announcement. I feel like that was a nice way to, uh, to kind of work that all through, but um, that couple, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens to them. I really do. You know, I always want the couple to be happy, right? Nobody wants to see somebody with no one. Absolutely. Yeah. I like that. They all kind of won. They all got something out of it. So if Rachel, yeah. if Gabby got bachelorette and Rachel was left there, we'd be like, Oh boy, she got stiffed, but they all, they're all getting a good shot at it. And that's important. Exactly. Yeah. And people were asking me, my YouTube channel is Rose therapy. And I just posted from last night. I'll post again, a recap. Um, and my Instagram is back to love doc. And I do help people with their attachment and styles day by online courses. Um, that's my thing. And I tell you, if there's only one theory that you ever knew about relationships, it would be attachment theory. It's been the most well-researched, documented, used by therapists in a variety of situations. It's just, I can't say enough about it. So once I found out about that theory, it just kind of changed my practice. Well, thanks so much for sharing that all with us. Uh, it's it's nice to uh, to hear from a professional. We're we're a bunch of people yelling into our microphones, but it's good to hear some actual great information. And we'll get make sure everyone, if you haven't already, follow Dr. Diane at Bat, Back to Love Doc and also on YouTube. Um, did I miss anything there? Did we get it all? 
No, I thank you for having, because I know you've been at this for hours already, and I just didn't want to spoil it for myself. So I wanted to make sure I, you know, just fully kind of watched it. No, this is with myself. This is great. Yes. I had a bunch of recappers on the East Coast, and I promised everyone we'd do a full four plus hour uh, recap. So this is it. This is our Super Bowl. But um, yeah, n anytime you have any um, thoughts about any of these relationships, you know I'm making content every day. So we always appreciate I it. I love it, Dave. You are you are um, awesome. I'm impressed. I do like one YouTube video a week. I can't imagine the content you produce. It's yeah, just a lot. And I'll, yeah. And I'll tell you what, normally, yeah. um, normally my interviews don't perform as well. Our conversation last week hit the crest of my surge. My channel's getting a quarter million views in the last 48 hours. It's unbelievable. I don't know where these people are coming from, but a ton of them saw your content. So I hope they're over there following you as well. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. And, um, We'll be in touch. All right. Well, thanks again. All right. uh, have a good night. Cheers to love. Cheers. Okay. <laughs> See you later. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment below. You can go follow her at Back to Love Doc on Instagram. And she's also on YouTube. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye, everybody.